Hello, welcome everyone. Um, today we will be talking about how to go secretless with Cert Manager. So my name is Tim, this is Ash. We're both Cert Manager maintainers and we both work for Vanify, which recently has been acquired by CyberArk. So let's start with Cert Manager. What is Cert Manager? In one sentence, Cert Manager is the best way to get X5 and N certificates if you're running any kind of workload in Kubernetes. Basically, Cert Manager uses the Kubernetes API, so you can use the API to interact with Cert Manager to request certificates, and then it will automatically provision those certificates for you and make sure that they are renewed in time so you don't have any outages. Applications that then get these certificates, they can use them to do server and client authentication. And basically, as you see in the diagram, Cert Manager kind of acts as a, as a intermediary between your application and a certificate authority. It requests certificates for the application, and then it places the obtained certificates close to the application so it can be used by the application. But Cert Manager is more than just a technical solution. It's actually a whole community of people who are interested in PKI, who are interested in Kubernetes, controllers, that kind of fun stuff. And I'm very honored to announce here, for the first time um, at KubeCon, that Cert Manager has reached the CNCF graduated status. If you don't know what it is, it's basically a label to recognize the quality of the project, the quality of the community, and also all the effort that we put in the, in the project. Um, I would like to thank all the contributors, all the users, and also the, the rest of the maintainers for Cert Manager. I think it has been an amazing journey to get to this point. And I mean, this is just one step in this journey. We'll continue working on the project, we'll continue growing all these stats that you see on the screen, and we'll continue improving the project. On that note, if you want to contribute, if you're, if you're feeling inspired by this talk, um, please reach out, reach out to us. You can use this QR code to learn more. Um, we're always open to new people who are interested in this space, who are interested in controllers. Um, so feel free to join us. So then for the second part of the talk, or of the title of the talk, secretless. Basically, if we're talking about secretless, we mean by that the fact that no secrets are shared across machines in your system. So no secrets are shared over the wire. Um, an easy way to explain what secretless is, is by explaining what it's not. So if you have like username password solution, uh, if you store a username password somewhere in a secret, that's not secretless. If you have like a one-time token, that's not secretless. If you have any kind of shared secret, that's not secretless. What is secretless, however, is if you're generating a secret locally, but you're not sharing it. For example, you generate a, um, a key locally, and then you use that key to solve challenges. That's still a secretless solution. So today, we will be talking about how to make your issuance process um, fully secretless. Although we will try to do that as much as possible, um, there is one big catch here, and that's JWTs. JWTs are kind of secretless. They have a lot of the um, good properties of secretless solutions, but ultimately you will end up still sharing this secret JWT value. So it's almost there. Also, I would like to mention secretless with a capital S. Um, here we're actually talking about a solution that doesn't use any secret resources, so Kubernetes secret resources. This is another thing that we will try to achieve. On top of secretless, we'll also make it secretless. So let's start by looking at the issuance process of Cert Manager, and let's see how we can make this fully secretless. Thank you very much. So, yeah, Cert Manager, uh, as Tim mentioned, is a tool for provisioning X509 certificates. And to do that, we need someone somewhere that we can get X509 certificates from. 
So if we're looking at this diagram, cert manager needs to talk to a certificate authority. Um, in practice, there are many different certificate authorities that cert manager supports. So um, we're going to be using specific examples here, but it doesn't really matter what they are. Uh, what matters is there's a lot of options, and uh, there are some commonalities among all of these different types of, uh, of issuer. So let's look at the process of doing this then. How, how do we actually issue a certificate? So um, if you're familiar with X509 or TLS certificates, you'll sort of, you may have heard of these terms before. What Cert Manager does is creates what we call a CSR, which is a certificate signing request. It sends that to the certificate authority to get it signed. The certificate authority is the sort of organization, computer, whatever, that controls the, the key of the, of the issuer. Um, we've thrown some examples here, obviously Venify, uh, HashiCorp Vault, um, AWS has one, there's one in GCP. Let's Encrypt is probably the most popular one um, that we see that people use in Cert Manager. Um, the key is once the certificate authority is done with it, it will send it back to Cert Manager. The challenge that we have is that Cert Manager needs to be able to talk to that CA, right? We can't just send random CSRs off and expect to get a reply. We need to show that we're allowed to talk to the CA, and we need to show that we're allowed to request whatever we're requesting in the certificate. So if I want a certificate for example.com, I need to be able to prove that I can get a certificate for example.com. Again, if you've, used, if you've used Let's Encrypt, you're probably familiar with that kind of process. So the simplest solution for talking to a CA is a static secret, right? Um, we're using the inbuilt HashiCorp Vault issuer here for, as an example, but and it really doesn't matter. Um, what matters is that what we're saying is, hey, cert manager, go read this secret that we've, that we've created and use the token that's in that and you send that off to the issuer. Um, it's, it's very conceptually simple. There's, there's nothing particularly difficult about this idea. Um, but it's, it, unsurprisingly, as we started with it, it's not the best solution that you can have. The issue here is that any secret really needs to be able to be rotated. We're obviously intimately familiar with that, um, with X509 certificates. Um, these static tokens are also really high value targets. Uh, if, if someone steals them, they can pretend to be cert manager. They can issue certificates as though they were cert manager. That's not good. Um, they also tend towards being manually set up. So um, things like GitOps, which you'd consider a best practice, uh, that's pretty difficult to do with this kind of thing. It's not impossible, but Often you see this kind of approach and it's kind of manual and it's not great. So what's better? Well, better would be um, workload identity or machine identity or some other name for the, the, the concept. So this is the idea of using something inherent to the environment that we're in to uh, authenticate to the CA that we want to talk to. The same applies for a lot of other um, types of workload, but here we're just talking about talking to the CA. Um, in Kubernetes, the sort of standard way of doing workload identity would be using a Kubernetes service account token. Every workload that's running in Kubernetes has an associated service account of some kind, and you can get tokens from the Kubernetes API server that uh, represent your workload. So then if Cert Manager can fetch that workload identity, it can send that off to the certificate authority instead. Um, hopefully, if we've configured the certificate authority correctly, it will accept that and use that in place of any other kind of secret, and then send back an X509 identity that we can use. So we sort of plug the workload identity into the issuance lifecycle. So what does that look like? Well, less YAML for a start. Um, so here, again, using the Vault example, but it doesn't have to be Vault, um, we're referring to whatever service account we, we may be using, and uh, we're specifying in this case the role that we'll use in the CA, but. Again, not, not hugely important. What is important here is that um, when I'm creating this resource in Kubernetes, I'm not having to specify any secrets. I've just told Cert Manager how to go and get a secret, which is the key. Um, so workload identity is, is kind of secretless. Um, the, we, we, we've got a chart here where we're showing that static secrets are all in red, so danger. Um, the, the approach we're using here with service account tokens in Kubernetes um, has some green here, right? The, specifically, you can restrict who will accept these JWTs. You don't need to share any secrets to be able to trust the JWT or, or JOT. Um, 
And what's really useful is that they actually are time limited, so they will expire. Even if I steal the JLUT, eventually it will run out and I'd have to steal another one to be able to continue um, abusing it. All this said, I am a certified JWT hater. Like, <laughs> I, will, I will use any opportunity to hate on them because you do have to send this over the wire. When you're talking to the CA, you send the JWT verbatim. That means if I'm spying on your communication, I can just take it and use it. So it's, it's secretless. It's certainly a lot more secretless in that you're not having to configure a static secret, but it's not fully secretless. Um, and, and therein lies the rub. Tim hinted at this earlier as well. There is a better solution than this still, which would be X509 certs. Surprise, I, I like X509 certs. Um, the beauty of that is that you wouldn't need to send anything. You just use the private key that you have locally um, to prove that you own the certificate. Um, then that, you can use that to talk to the server. This would be something like mutual TLS, if you're familiar with that. Um, this is better, as I say. It's, it's, we've got it all in green, so it must be better. But actually, the important thing here is that most issuers don't support this. The, the problem that you're going to have here is that um, you need an X509 cert to be able to get a different X509 cert. So you end up in a, a sort of place where you need something like Spiffy or something like that. Conveniently, we're doing a talk last thing on Friday about Spiffy. So if you, uh, if, if you like this, maybe come along to that if you're still going to be around. Um, but that's enough talk about issuance. Let's pass back over to Tim and talk about provisioning instead. Thank you. So. We have seen how to do the issuance part of the certificate flow and how to do that secretlessly using these uh, service account tokens. However, when we are provisioning certificates using Cert Manager, by default, what we will provision is actually a Kubernetes secret. So normally, what you do in Cert Manager is you create a certificate resource and that certificate resource has a secret name in it. That's actually the target where the issued certificate together with the private key will be stored. Now, you might have noticed when I was talking about Kubernetes secrets, that doesn't really sound secretless, right? So in order to fix that, we can actually use an add-on that we also uh, maintain under the Cert Manager project called CSI driver, where we don't use certificate resources instead, what we do is we created a CSI driver that allows you to request certificates through volume mounts. So this is an example of a, of a pod where we configured a volume referring to the cert manager CSI driver and through the volume attributes we actually specify what issue we want to use and also some of the attributes that we want um, in the certificate itself. So if we use this, Cert Manager will directly, or the CSI driver will directly create the private key and the certificate in the volume, and it will not store that in cluster state. So there will be no secret resource. Instead, it will be on the file system of that container. Um, even better is it will not even leave the nodes on which the CSI driver is running. Like CSI driver runs on each node. Um, so it will stay on the same node, will not leave that node, and it will also stay in memory. So the CSI driver solution that we developed is purely based on memory mounts, and it doesn't store anything on disk. So that's a great solution, sounds perfect, but there are some disadvantages too. It's not ideal for each workload. So, um, for example, well, what's typical for CSI drivers is that the Volume mount is, of course, very tightly coupled to the pod. So every time that you restart the pod or you reschedule it, a new certificate has to be issued. And that requires you to use an issuer that is very cheap in its issuance process, right? So typically, this will be like um, an issuer that connects to your private uh, PKI infrastructure. You, you shouldn't use this like with Let's Encrypt or anything like that. Then it will take a very long time for your container to start up and you'll be uh, hitting like rate limiting issues very soon. So that's how to do the provisioning step fully secretlessly. We also saw how to do the issuance step fully secretlessly. Let's now see this in practice. Let's uh, try a little demo. 
So, um, yeah, not sure how to do this with a mic microphone. I could do the world's most expensive microphone stand. So I have a cluster here um, running, and it's basically a simple kind cluster. On this kind cluster, I installed Cert Manager, also the CSI driver, like I mentioned before, and a Vault instance, which I'll be using as the um, PKI solution for this setup. So you can actually see that these components are already running in the cluster. Um, the next step now is to configure Vault so that it can be used as the PKI solution. So I created a root certificate and it configured everything in order to use that root certificate to issue certificates. Then in the next script, I'll actually configure Vault to accept the service account tokens that we, um, that we generate in the cluster so that we can use the service account tokens to authenticate to Vault and to request certificates from Vault. So this will be the same for every CA solution. Basically what we do is we point the, um, the CA to a OpenID Connect endpoint at which it will uh, find the JWKS uh, keys. It will use those keys to validate the JWTs that it gets, the service account tokens JWTs, and it will validate these by matching them with the service account name and the service account namespace that we specify here. So after that is set up, um, the whole PKI setup is done, and now we can configure our cert manager issuer. So for this issuer, we, we first start with creating a service account. So this is a service account that will be used to create the service account tokens. Um, we give cert manager the permission to request certificates, uh, request service account tokens for this service account. And then we configure the issuer to talk to the Vault instance um, and use the service account that we just created. And then the last step is to actually create our workloads, use the CSI driver volume, and refer to this issue that we just created in the volume attributes. Also here we we specify that we want a certificate um, for domain name example.com, but typically this will be something that identifies your um, workloads, for example, when you're trying to set up a MTLS connection. So you see the, the containers now being created here. If we run this again, we see that it started. So this means that the CSI driver was able to um, provision this mount and the certificate was actually issued. So you'll see if you look for the certificate request resources that there is now a certificate request resource that was issued um, and that was used by the CSI driver to obtain the certificate. So that's this one. Um, so now we have the certificate. Let's take a look at the workload container and let's look at the location where we mounted the certificate. So now we're in the container um, and let's First of all, list the files in this folder. I see there are three files. Um, if you're familiar with Cert Manager, there are always three files. The CA.CRT contains the CA certificate, or like the best guess of what we think the CA certificate is. TLS.CRT con contains the full chain, starting from the leaf um, until, the chain, uh, until the root certificate. It might not contain the root certificate since that's not really necessary if you're running a server. And then tls.key will actually contain the private key um, related to that leaf certificate or for that leaf certificate. So what we can do now is show the certificate itself. So the leaf certificate. 
And here we see that we have a leaf certificate. It was issued by this um, root CA. That's actually what we configured in the Vault PKI setup. And in the common names, or in the uh, send, we will actually see the DNS name example.com. So that's the full demo. That's how everything works, and that's how you can secretlessly, secretlessly request certificates using Cert Manager. So I'm, I'm really glad that uh, it's quite simple to set that up because my arm was really starting to get tired there. Um, so let's recap on what we just saw um, because it does look a bit like just commands on a terminal, obviously, that's what the demo was. But there's quite a lot of important steps in that. The key thing is that authentication is important, right? It's, it's easy to set up cert managers to get certificates for you, but you have to think about how cert manager will do that. And it's possible with a lot of issuers to do better than just sort of a static secret or, or relying on something else. Um, you can avoid static secrets if possible. What we saw there was because Vault was running inside that Kubernetes cluster, it was able to get the public keys of the, of the Kubernetes service account tokens and validate that way um, rather than having to rely on a static secret. Um, it's, it's subtle, but it is incredibly powerful to be able to do that. The other important thing that we saw was that we had no secret resource, that's a Kubernetes secret resource with a capital S, um, because we use CSI driver. So that pod um, has, has no permissions to read secrets. It doesn't need to be able to read any secrets. If, if I broke into that pod and, and did evil things, I wouldn't be able to read any secret at all. I don't need to be able to. It's all on, it appears as though it's on the disk, even though it's actually stored in memory in practice. Um, there's plenty more details on CSI driver on certmanager.io, which is our website. Um, Tim mentioned this earlier, but this works best with something like private PKI. Um, that's most of the issuers that aren't called Acme or Let's Encrypt. Um, using this for Acme will lead to a bad time. You'll, you'll exhaust your rate limit, and, and it's not really for that. Uh, in that case, secrets are probably a pretty good way of, of doing that, but you can, you, can use, uh, you can get publicly trusted certs through other methods as well that aren't Acme and, and still benefit from CSI driver. Um, so we're going to start to wrap up the uh, main section here. Um, one thing I'd say now is that if you have any questions uh, that you want to ask, there will be questions at the end. Um, now might be a good time to make your way over to the, the microphone that's located there, um, because this is just sort of a bit, of a bit more information. First of all, um, we have a booth here at Cert Manager. As a graduated project, we get a full-time booth um, here at KubeCon. Uh, we're in kiosk 10A. If you uh, look for the project pavilion, you'll find us standing there. This is us in Chicago last year. Um, we are printing physical X509 certificates, which I think are universally regarded as good swag. So you can come and pick up one of these, and there's actually a QR code on the back that will let you download the certificate we're issuing. Um, my, my spiel is that we have a Raspberry Pi running inside the booth that's running Cert Manager. So this is a full end-to-end -end demo of Cert Manager. You'll be able to download a certificate that we issued, and uh, I think it expires in... 30 years, so it probably be, it'll be good for a while. I'm being careful not to show the back so you can't steal my certificate, because I just printed that this morning. <laughs> um, also, because we've graduated um, this year, and, and we're so happy to be announcing that, we have a ton of swag. Um, there is everything from keychains to uh, little pins that you can have. Uh, we've got stickers, of course, shiny and non-shiny. We've even got some temporary tattoos if you're really into your certificates. Um, we do also, usually we use blue wax to do the seals on these certificates, but we've got gold because, of course, we're celebrating. Um, yeah, please do come along. If, if you do the whole end-to-end -end demo with the certificate, we also have T-shirts to give away as, just to sort of keep the, the swag train going. But the main thing is the certificates, let's be honest. Um, so thank you all very much for listening. We have a feedback QR code here. Um, if, if you enjoyed this, if you didn't enjoy this, please leave feedback. We'd really appreciate that. Um, we'd also really appreciate any questions that anyone might have. We're more than happy to chat about this, um, about Cert Manager more generally. Um, we just like talking about certificates. So please do feel free. Thank you very much.
the microphone just in the middle of the room if you do have any questions. Over here. Guys, I do have a question. So oh, I love to see when projects say, hey, yep. we have a clear path to joining the community, becoming a maintainer. If I were to ask what is the best way somebody can get involved that would be helpful for the project, what would you say? Okay, so the question was, what's the, uh, the best way to get involved that would be helpful for the project? So anything, like um, <laughs> um, there's plenty of work that goes into a project like this, right? A key thing in that is, is um, code. Obviously, we write a lot of code to do this stuff. But we also have uh, plenty of documentation that needs doing. Answering questions in Slack for people that are familiar with how Server Manager works, that's really powerful. Um, so what we actually have uh, on the Server Manager website is a full uh, guide on getting involved. It's got links to meetings and Slack and all that good stuff. Um, if, you, if you drop into our Slack channel and ask a question, we'll more than happily point you in the right direction. Um, as, we, as we zoom back to the QR code, there you go. So that, the, all, all you need to know is on there, basically. Um, we can help uh, on Slack easily. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hi. Thanks for the talk. Um, super quick question. Does CSI driver currently support uh, rotation of certificates, or is only on mount? Yeah, so if you're using CSI driver, the certificate will be uh, rotated for you. So it will, it will be a file that changes on the file system, basically. That was an easy question. Um, so just two questions. One for uh, transient workloads, like workers getting certificates to talk to servers. Um, when the pods go away, do revocation lists get updated so that's not used anymore? or? you know, to prevent people from lifting the certificate uh, elsewise? I didn't fully understand the question, but maybe asked it. Oh. Sorry, could you, could you just repeat that quickly? Right, so once a certificate's issued for my pod and it's mounted, but my pod goes away. Does that certificate go on a revocation list to get, you know, so, unused? <laughs> so the question is about revocation. Um, so Cert Manager does not support revocation, and revocation is an incredibly uh, controversial right. topic within, within certificate enthusiasts. Um, we don't do any revocation. There's no reason that we couldn't make an attempt at it, but it's very difficult in Kubernetes to know when something is being deleted and be sure that it is being deleted. So if, if theoretically we could hook into like a pod's life cycle and know for sure that it's been deleted, we could theoretically revoke that certificate and create a CRL. Um, in practice, we can't ever guarantee that or be sure about that, so we don't try. <laughs> um, but what, we're, what we generally do, rather than uh, worry about CRLs or anything like that, is, is try to encourage the shortest lifetime possible and work in that direction so that right, even if, it, once, the, once the pod's done, like, even if you stole it, you want to get it for half an hour and then the cert's done anyway, you know? Um, if, if you're really interested in revocation, um, the, the contributing page for Slack like, would be interested in talking about it. I can't imagine it being on the roadmap anytime soon because it's not generally well used in the community. But it's, it's an interesting question. Thank you. One more thing maybe to add to that. Like it's per perfectly fine if you're doing MTLS to have like certificates that are only one hour in uh, validity. So then probably your revocation list will take longer to be updated and will be cached longer than the life cycle of the actual certificates. So that's kind of the solution that we think is more elegant right now. Um, but there, is, there are some uh, different views on that, definitely. Does the CSI driver work with external issuers? Yeah, definitely. So if you, um, so the question was, uh, does CSI driver work with external issuers? So if we, if we look at this diagram, basically, um, I, I maybe forgot to tell you this, but both sides are really, really um, pluggable and replaceable. So both the provisioning part of Cert Manager and the issuance part of Cert Manager can be replaced. Um, like you're saying, the issuance part, by default, Cert Manager has like certain issuers that it installs, but 
those issues are like almost identical in, in terms of implementations to um, external issuers, but those you just have to install separately. Um, but you can kind of mix and match every kind of solution with uh, provisioning solutions and issuer solutions. So yeah, um, if you take a look at the YAML here, um, you just have to specify the right issuer kind and issuer group to point to your external issuer, and it, it should work just like any other issuer. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hey there, so uh, my question's about like uh, microservice architecture and open IDC Connect when you're using that with MTLS, right? Do you guys have like a good like first point starter application to use for that authentication besides Vault, like what Keycloak or something in there to be able to not have to go in, do all the IDC tokens and then pass them back into your applications? Is that um, so, so your question's around if we have like a, a, a like quick where, start. Where should I start? Yeah. 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 Um, that's an excellent question. Well, first of all, another opportunity to plug our talk on Friday. Like we, we, um, so obviously the code for that will be open source, and, and if you can't make it, it's the last one of the day, then, then it will all be on YouTube, obviously. Um, but there'll be details there on how, how we're approaching doing something like that with, with Cert Manager like acting as, as a spiffy server and issuing out entities that way. That'll show kind of the, the, the bones of it, if you like. Um, I'm not sure if we have anything exactly like that on the website currently. That would be an excellent uh, point of contribution if we could sort of, uh, show that tutorial. That would be excellent. But um, fundamentally, it's, it, it doesn't change much from one certificate to many certificates, right? The, the workload doesn't change that much. Um, we, we know from some testing, unfortunately, our, our colleague Richard isn't here, but he's done a lot of testing in this regard. We know Cert Manager can scale to, to you know, High, like high amounts of certificates, um, a lot of certificates in, in bursts as well. Um, it's by scaling the cert manager pod, it's quite easy to, to change that. Um, so it, it, it's certainly doable. I, I'm not sure that I have a, anything excellent to point you at, unfortunately, but if like, we'd happily talk more about it. Yeah, so I guess the one last follow-up question, with each one of those pods that gets created that has, let's say, the CSI driver, that's each an additional certificate per each pod. Each pod is individualized at that too, so you could use that for audit, like looks and, and, and yeah. tracing. Yeah, so um, an interesting thing about CSI driver is that if, if I'm just creating a cert manager certificate resource, it's the cert manager controller that creates the private key, and that's kind of CPU intensive. Something that's kind of interesting about CSI driver is that each pod creates it itself kind of thing. It, um, it spreads the workload out across many nodes. It's not just the cert manager controller which is uh, handling all that load. So yeah, it, it, each pod gets its own individual identity which is, is powerful for some workloads anyway, but it also is about where the, the heavy lifting gets done with the generation of the private key. Excellent, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any more questions, anyone? <laughs> um, I don't have a use case, but I'm just thinking through each pod getting its own certificates. What do we do with stateful sets where we may want to say have the same certificate for each, you know, numbers one through five kind of thing, right? So the, the question's about um, stateful sets and uh, what you might do in that situation. I think with a stateful set, probably CSR driver would work in a lot of cases. Um, having a different private key doesn't necessarily cause you any harm. if, if if each pod is representing the same identity. I think that's fair to say. Um, if you definitely need it to be exactly the same certificate, which I wouldn't expect to be the case in a lot of, a lot of situations, a cert manager certificate would, would solve that quite neatly. Obviously, then it will be stored in a Kubernetes secret, but um, that sec one secret can be referred to by all the pods and, and handled that way. Anything, anything to add? It's a glowing review. <laughs> um, any more questions from anyone at all? Okay. Um, thank you all so much for listening and hanging around. Uh, really appreciate it.